an alien dog with superpowers becomes best friends with a poor boy who is humiliated by almost everyone at his school, and together they will face a new journey of challenges. Today we will recap the story of the 2008 movie CJ7 The Magic Toy. Dicky is a very poor boy who studies in one of the best schools in his city. His father, named T, works as a bricklayer in large constructions and uses all his money to pay for a private school for the boy. Miss Yuin, his teacher, cares a lot about him and is worried to see the boy always going very dirty to class. The woman tries to talk to Dicka's father, but the boy says that his father is always very busy with work, so he doesn't have time for him. The boy's mother died when he was still young, so Dicky spent all day alone. During class, when asked what he would like to be when he grows up, the boy states that he wants to be poor, because his father says that if Dicky is a person of integrity and studious, even poor he would be respected. As the boy spoke, his teacher, Mr. Sao accidentally dropped his pen on the floor. Dicky then gets up, takes the object and hands it to him. However, the man has a completely unexpected attitude. He orders the boy to put the pen back on the floor and uses a rag to pick it up as Dick has touched it. During lunch, one of his wealthy classmates named Johnny shows the boys his newest toy, a robot dog named CJ1. At that moment, the boy spots Maggie, a young woman in his class, whose size was completely disproportionate compared to the rest of the students. As he and his colleagues make fun of her, Dickie appears and asks them to leave her alone. The petty delinquents ignore him and leave. Gym class begins and Dickie is banned from participating in activities because his teacher claims that the boy's sneakers are not suitable. A few minutes after class starts, Maggie appears beside him and informs that she pretended to have forgotten her sneakers to be with the boy. She asks if all of Dicka's shoes are that old and he says yes, because his father took his shoes out of the trash. Despite admiring his father and not being ashamed of him, the boy wanted new sneakers so he could participate in the classes since he is passionate about sports. In construction, T appears to be weak and can barely work. His boss then decides to send him away, however, the man asks him to let him stay because he needs to buy a fan for his son, who can't sleep at night due to the heat. The man questions why T goes through so many difficulties for his son to study at a private school and he says he wants Dicky to have more opportunities in life and not end up like him. Upon hearing this, his boss allows him to continue working there. At night, T comes home with a fan hanging from his bike. The man lives in an abandoned building that was partially demolished. When he gets home, Dicky is waiting for him and is in disbelief to see that his father got them a fan. However, when T turns on the machine, it does not work. The boy soon suspects that his father found that fan in the trash, but the man claims he paid dearly for it. He says the device was working when he bought it, but ultimately Dicky had to use a hand fan to keep himself cool. During dinner, the father tries to remove the rotten parts of an apple to give to his son and the boy takes advantage of the moment to ask for new sneakers. Then, T guarantees that he will get him a new pair of shoes. Before bed, they have fun together and one of their favorite activities is to kill the cockroaches that were hiding in every corner of that house. The next morning, they watch TV outside an electronics store window. The news announced the appearance of a flying saucer, whose image was recorded by one of the local residents. However, the subject of the photo was identical to the hat of the man claiming to have seen the spaceship, which is a good indication that he was lying. While T was watching the news, Dicky enters the toy store next door and finds a toy similar to Johnny's. He claims that if his father buys the CJ-1, he will never ask for anything again. However, the man has no money and asks the boy to leave the toy where it was. Dickie doesn't obey him and keeps insisting on taking him, so his father slaps him. After returning the toy, the boy starts crying and runs out of the store. His father goes after him, and when he finds him, he realizes that Dickie is with his teacher. Ewan informs him that she wants to visit him at his house to talk about Dickie, as she believes that parents should also participate in their children's education. However, T shies away and claims to be too busy at work. During the night, the man goes to the junkyard and finds a well-preserved pair of sneakers, which he plans to take to Dickie, then it finds a TV and tries to verify that the set is working. At that moment, a flying saucer appears from the wreckage and flies away, leaving a toy behind. When he gets home, the man tells the boy that he has found something much better than CJ1. Dickie goes to check it out and discovers that it was just a useless jelly ball. Still, he decides to take that thing to school and Johnny shows up to torment him. When asked what that thing is, Dicky states that his toy is called CJ7 and it is much better than CJ1. The kid says that Dicka's dad probably found that crap in the trash and the kid threatens to hit him if he keeps talking about his dad. At that moment, Johnny blows a whistle and, in moments, a boy five times bigger than Dicky, nicknamed Dragon, appears. He grabs the boy by the arm and launches him away. At night, Dicky gets scolded by his father for fighting at school and ripping his uniform. 
the boy says that his classmates were laughing at him because of that stupid toy. While telling his father what had happened, Dickie accidentally turns the thing on. The ball starts to move and several spikes appear on its surface. Suddenly, a black hole begins to open. Frightened, the boy throws the object away. He tells his father that the ball is cursed and starts seeing ghosts around the house. However, the man ignores him and tries to fix the uniform. The closet door next to the bed opens and Dickie looks inside to find out what's inside. At that moment, the boy spots a strange creature moving and screams once more. Annoyed with the kid, the father puts him in the closet and leaves him there for a few minutes. In the meantime, the boy is so scared that he asks God to protect him. That's when the green ball starts to glow, turning into some kind of flashlight and producing an optical illusion that transports Dickie to another dimension. During the vision, the young man spots a cabbage-headed creature using its antenna to repair a broken object. In doing so, the stone that gives the monster energy is destroyed and it turns into some sort of stuffed doll. However, if the stone that supplies his vital energy is replaced, he can come back to life. After the vision, Dickie is surprised to find that that green acorn has turned into an alien. His father opens the closet door and he tries to hide the creature. When the man goes to work, the boy tries to find out what that thing is and concludes that it is a space dog. From that moment on, he calls him CJ7. Together they have fun all night long. As they dance, the monster finds a rotten apple and uses its powers to make it good again. When he tastes the fruit and sees that it is no longer spoiled, Dickie is convinced he has found a magical dog. The next day at school, he walks in with CJ7 on his shoulders and proposes to him a test. The boy says that if that creature manages to defeat the cruelest dog on earth, it would prove that he really is an alien super dog. Hearing this, the little monster runs towards the animal and, with a few blows, manages to defeat it. The boy is extremely proud and continues on his way to school with that thing on his shoulder. Now both are very happy. Hiding in the bathroom, Dickie enlists CJ7's help in getting a 100 on the test he was about to take. At that moment, the creature takes its toolbox and starts making the glasses that would allow the boy to spy on the answers of his colleagues. During the assessment, robots resembling a snitch, but much smaller and with a giant eye, pop out of the sides of the glasses and analyze the exam of Dick's classmates. However, the robots catch the eye of Johnny, who starts hunting them and accidentally attacks the professor. Fanny takes the opportunity to do the same using the pretext that she was chasing a fly. Later, the test result is revealed in, for the first time, Dickie got an A after celebrating his victory, the teacher asks to see the boy's glasses. The boy then throws the object towards him. When he approaches Mr. Sao, the glasses explode. When he meets CJ7 again, the boy says that his next class is gym class, so he would need a super sneaker. A few seconds later, the shoes were ready. The teacher shows the students his personal jumping record and claims that no one has ever been able to break it. However, Dickie manages to jump the obstacle easily. The man lowers the bar and asks the boy to jump again as it is very strange for a child to be able to jump at that height. The young man accepts the challenge, however, his sneakers allow him to jump even higher. When he goes to the treadmill, the shoe releases a pair of mechanical legs that attach to the boy's legs. In this way, he manages to run so fast that not even the treadmill is able to keep up with him and ends up being destroyed. In swimming, the boy excels once again. When he jumps into the pool, propellers are released from his shoe, which allow him to swim quickly under the water. In soccer, his kick is so powerful that it destroys the goalpost. At this point, the professor realizes that something is wrong with Dicka's sneakers and challenges him to a fight. Surprisingly, the kid ends up winning. Miss Yuan appears behind him and informs him that the boy has gotten himself into serious trouble. Meanwhile, Mr. Sao walks along with several police officers towards the soccer field, but Dickie manages to escape as his sneakers also allow him to fly. After seeing a cloud shaped like CJ7, the boy wakes up with the rest of the apple in his mouth and realizes he was dreaming. At that time, his father is coming home from work and orders him to get up and go to school soon. The young man sees the little monster in his backpack and believes that, Although it was all a dream, the alien dog was real and could help him get a 100 on the test. On the way to school, the boy stops in an alley where the dog lived. He challenges CJ7 to defeat him. The toy does not run away from the fight and will face that monster. However, the dog rushes at him at full speed and throws the little monster away. Then both the alien and the boy need to flee to avoid being attacked. At this point, Dickie is already discouraged with his space dog, but still decides to take him to school. In the bathroom, he fights with CJ7 and orders the dog to do some magic so he can get a 100 on the test. However, the most the little monster can do in this situation is a super poop, which the boy takes to the room. During the test, he looks at that pile of feces to find an answer and nothing happens. 
Mr. Sal informs him that time has run out and Dicky is desperate as he hasn't even started writing yet. Johnny asks why he's carrying a poop and makes the thing land on Dicka's face. After the assessment, the boy, who is already corrupted by rabies, shoves CJ7's head down the toilet and claims he was tricked by the dog. He orders the creature to hand over its magical weapons, but what it receives is a blast of poop. At gym class, the teacher asks the gardeners to use their hoses to wash the boy, who was completely dirty and smelly. After this humiliation, Dicky goes, again, after CJ7. He pretends to be sorry and asks the dog to come out of hiding. The little monster believes the boy's words and approaches. At that moment, he ends up being captured and thrown in the trash. Dicky leaves the alien behind and leaves, but soon he really regrets his actions because he realizes that he was the only one to blame for having created all that expectation on top of the little monster. Realizing he made a mistake, he turns around and goes after his dog. However, the garbage truck just passed by collecting all the contents of the dumps. Desperate, the kid runs after the vehicle and yells asking him to stop, however, he is completely ignored. Later, when he gets home, he tells his father that he lost the toy he had been given. The boy is in tears and doesn't know what to do. At that moment, T tells that a creature appeared there and, apparently, was waiting for Dicky. When he sees the boy, CJ7 jumps for joy. Apparently, the little monster had already forgotten what Dicky did to him that day. T is curious about what that thing is and Dicky claims it's just a toy. The man starts swinging, bending and twisting the CJ7 and finally crushes it with an iron plate. Still, the creature is still alive. He is determined to destroy the little monster, but Dicky asks his father to stop doing that to his toy. During the night, the boy can barely sleep due to the heat, so CJ7 uses his magic antenna to fix the fan. After doing this, he becomes exhausted and goes back to sleep. The next morning, the man wonders what happened to get the fan working again. Dicky hands him his test, and T is surprised to find that his son got the A. The boy walks through the school with the little monster on his shoulders and ends up being seen by the delinquents in his class. Upon realizing he has been discovered, CJ7 enters Dicka's backpack and Johnny asks what he was hiding. The kid ignores him and continues walking, however, his backpack is stolen and CJ7 is captured. The little monster manages to escape, but is pursued. After a few seconds, Johnny manages to pick it up again and uses various tools to try to find out what's inside that thing. However, no weapon is able to pierce it. Dicky manages to break free and jumps on top of the boy, opening a gap for CJ7 to escape. Just as he was about to punch that delinquent, the dragon appears and grabs his arm. He intends to give Dicky another beating, but is stopped by Maggie, who orders the boy to let him go. The boy tries to knock her down, but Maggie is stronger and, with a single blow, throws him away. He throws a barrel of water at the girl, which explodes with her bare hands. The dragon doesn't give up and runs towards her, but Maggie grabs him around the waist and squeezes until the boy faints. Then she picks up Dicky and asks if the boy is okay. He thanks her for her help, and just then, Mr. Sal appears. While everyone is grounded in the yard, CJ7 approaches and hugs Dicky. The boy shows his classmates some tricks his toy can do. He asks CJ7 to sit down and make several different faces. At the end of the game, the little monster collapses and starts to break down. When he arrives at work, T shows all his colleagues that his son got a 100 on the test, he's extremely proud, but it sinks in when his boss goes to talk to him. The man says that if Dicky got full marks, he cheated. When looking at the test, he states that the boy got a zero and changed his grade to 100. When he gets home the next morning, T questions the boy about falsifying his exam and Dicky confesses that he really did. When he discovers the truth, the man decides to take the CJ7 out of his son's backpack, claiming that he would only get his toy back when he scored above 60 on a test. That day, Dicky had another appraisal, but this time he was determined to give it his all. Meanwhile, his father worked hard on the construction of a building tens of meters high. However, while working, an accident happens. A metal cylinder falls from the building and attaches itself to a rope that was tied to Tiz's feet, pulling the man down. His co-workers try to help him, but he can't help himself and falls off the building. Before reaching the ground, the man clings to a tarp, however, the fabric does not hold his weight for long and rips, causing T to have a fatal fall. At school, Dicky is overjoyed with the results of his exam when Miss Yuen visits. The woman takes the boy to the hospital, where his father was hospitalized. There, she receives the news that T could not resist his injuries. Heartbroken, the woman takes the boy home and gives him the news of his father's death. Dicky is desperate and asks the woman to leave. He says he needs to sleep and when he wakes up his father will be back. In tears, the teacher decides to leave the boy, as there was nothing to be done for him at that moment. During the night at the hospital, CJ7 manages to get out of the man's bag. 
T had taken the toy with him to work so Dickie couldn't take it. Seeing the dead man, the alien is very sad and decides to try to cure him. His first attempt takes effect, Tiz's wounds begin to heal, but it's still not enough to wake him up. Even having used his powers for a few seconds, the little monster is already exhausted. Still, he doesn't give up and continues the work. When Dickie wakes up, he finds his father sleeping next to him. The boy hugs him and asks him not to leave him anymore. Without really understanding what is happening, T hugs the boy back. Minutes later, Dickie finds CJ7 and realizes he's not doing well. The little monster can barely walk and is making a strange noise. Suddenly, a sphere falls from its antenna and the creature transforms into a ragdoll. T believes the toy's battery has run out. So the two try to find a power source for CJ7, but nothing works. So the boy decides to take his friend with him everywhere, in the hope that one day the little monster will wake up. During summer break, the students gather for a picnic and Dickie spots a flying saucer approaching. At that time, CJ7's antenna starts flashing and suddenly, hundreds of creatures similar to him appear and start running towards him. Will Dickie finally be able to fix CJ7 now that his alien friends have arrived? So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.